I'm an artist, so I could say it too, couldn't I? They called me that, so I could say it too. Welcome to Juanita Rogers' world. A world of mud, or funny brick, as she called it. Juanita spent her life shaping goat men, graveyard ants, and other preposterous, sometimes chilling images from mud she dug from around her rural two-room house. She used mule's teeth, cow skulls, antlers, and Spanish moss to decorate her work, which has been displayed in the Collection de la Art Brut Museum in Switzerland, the first by an American and black woman. Few people knew Juanita like Antone Hart did. She describes her primitive artist friend as a proud, independent person. Once I gave her a television and, and uh, I said, Juanita, let's put a little scarf on top of it so it won't get mud all over it. And she took that scarf off, you know, and she said, this is my house and I am the housekeeper here and I do it my way and this is the way I want to do it. Surely you guessed, this is Juanita's electric coffee pot and this is her squirrel. Juanita once said, this dirt changes fast from dirt to stone. Like when you make a cake, it changes from flour to dough. When bricks were not bricks, they were just mud. But then it turns into a house. Juanita was buried today in a casket surrounded by the love of her life. Mud. Kim Davis, WSFA TV News. collects them to use for structural support for the mud sculptures and um, yeah it was just it was so strange that um, you know uh, I just uh, accepted it. <laughs> How did you learn to talk to Juanita? At first I'm sure she did not trust you and how did you get her to trust you? Well, after the first time, um, I asked her if I could come back and visit her another day, and mm -hmm. I told her I was an artist myself, and um, sometimes I do quite well talking with people that um, are not uh, communicating in the normal way that we would communicate. So I sort of tried to talk with her on her own terms and forget my own way of speaking, and if she wanted to go into something of her imagination, then um, I just let it go. And, and so, so after going many times, she slowly became, became friendly with me. What did you all talk about at first? Well, at first, um, she wanted to tell me about, um, I wanted to know when she started to make the mud, and so I had so many questions to ask, and no one had ever shown any interest before. And so she started to tell me, and I, and I taped them and wrote them down in my notebook, and I was just so fascinated because uh, it, it was so strange, um, and I believed it to be true at first that, that um, um, when she started to make the mud and where she came from and so on. And uh, so basically the beginnings of the, the um, friendship were based on mm -hmm. me talking mm -hmm. and asking her so many mm -hmm. questions about her life. So she was glad that someone was interested. Did you find that her work when you entered her home to see all the mud was a work of art, a work of a different kind of art? Is it art? Yeah, I think it's art. I mean, um, at first, when I saw it, I think it, it was um, uh, like when you have too much to eat and everything is overpowering. It was falling apart, and, and if you picked it up, it would fall apart. And so it was really beautiful in its own way, but then it would fall apart. And so, you, you know, if you just moved it, it would, mm -hmm. it would disintegrate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I didn't know what you could do with it, really. And it was so big, it looked like um, that it just uh, had to stay there as a concept, really. And, um, so it really was kind of a, con a, a conceptual piece she was doing. She didn't care if it fell apart, and she just was making it because she had to make it, and that's what turned out. And if it fell apart afterwards, it, it I didn't seem to worry her, really. Hmm. Describe Juanita as you got a chance to know her. Well, um, I guess number one, what singles her out from most people is the fact that she has the big, had the biggest imagination and the most creative, descriptive way of, of living her life and explaining things and describing things than, 
really anybody I ever met. Hmm. Did you find her to be uh, strong-willed, independent-minded? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was um, really hard-headed and strong-headed and determined to do everything the way she wanted to do it and really sometimes to kind of bicker with people she loved her neighbors queenie and levi huffman and johnny mm -hmm. that lived next door and really they were the only people she really ever visited very often because they had a telephone and and so um uh, she loved to get mad at them for some reason and even though they loved each other they caused a lot she i think caused them a little trouble sometimes well, this past week, Anton and I attended Juanita's funeral. Juanita died January 24th after a bout with cancer. Let's take a look now at Juanita Rogers telling her own story in an interview with Anton about a year ago. They say I'm an artist, so I could say it too, couldn't I? They called me that, so I could say it too. What, what do you think an artist is? An uh, artist is a person that he shapes things, you know, like your head or something, or something like that. That's what I think an artist is. He could take clay or any kind of stuff like that and shape the real head of a person. That's what I think an artist is. But some artists, they draw just the same. But it's the same. It runs the same, look like to me. Welcome to Juanita Rogers' world, a world of mud, or funny brick, as she called it. Juanita spent her life shaping goat men, graveyard ants, and other preposterous, sometimes chilling images from mud she dug from around her rural two-room house. Just take it and roll it up like that, and roll it, and I get my shape into it. She never took art lessons, except learning from singer Clarence Carter how to make mud. Yet she formed lifelike pieces and used mule's teeth, cow skulls, and objects natural to her surroundings to decorate her work. Juanita once looked at Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci's work and compared hers to his. The pictures in this book seem more like the work I'm doing than that do. Few people knew Juanita Rogers like Antone Hart did. They met three years ago. Miss Hart describes her primitive artist friend as a strong-willed, determined person. She was determined right from the beginning to not take welfare, to not take food stamps, because she said she already had a job and that there were other people in the world that, that needed this, and she didn't, and she, she uh, was determined to make it on her own when she was sick. She was determined to stay out there and not ask any help from anybody, you know, and, uh, and uh, do it exactly the way she wanted to do it once I gave her a television. And, and uh, I said, Juanita, let's put a little scarf on top of it so it won't get mud all over it. And she took that scarf off, you know, and she said, this is my house, and I am the housekeeper here, and I do it my way, and this is the way I want to do it. And I came out the next week, she'd covered the television, painted it with mud, written Juanita on the outside of it, you know. Her mailbox says, Juanita, and, and it says, this is for only me. And that's what, and inside is a piece of mud. Miss Hart's gallery is now filled with Juanita's work, like her electric coffee pot and the squirrel. He heard my humble call and he owned me as a child. Juanita once said, this dirt changes fast from dirt to stone. Like when you make a cake, it changes from flour to dough. When bricks were not bricks, they were just mud. But then it turns into a house. Juanita Rogers was buried last Wednesday in a casket surrounded by the love of her life. Mud.